Well, good day, curd nerds. Today we're making a cheese from the Azores in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and it's called Sal Giorgi. So, Sal Giorgi is similar in style to a cheddar. It's supposed to be a little bit moister and semi hard. But during the make of the cheese, there were mistakes made. Uh, I think I cut the curd way too early. Uh, it wasn't firm enough. And I think I didn't add enough rennet for the amount of milk that I was using. I was using a recipe from uh, cheesemaking.com by Jim Wallace. And uh, yeah, I think I may have made a mistake. Now, probably because the rennet amount that he put in the recipe was very low uh, and I didn't take into account the amount of time, extra time that I needed to get the curd to set. So you'll see during the video of the making of the uh, Sal Giorgi that there were a lot of fat expelled, a lot of uh, milk fat expelled during pressing and uh, it was very hard to press even though I added a lot of pressure. That's where I went wrong but anyway if you I will put corrections through the video as we go along uh, and put the right amount of rennet I think it needs uh, because uh, I want you all to succeed, of course. Anyway, enough of me waffling. Let's get on and see how we made Sal Giorgi. So don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment and then lay it out um, so it's all ready to go. Now I've set up my sink area with my a sous vide and my press and I've already got all the other equipment including the stainless steel colander ready to go. So the ingredients you'll need for this cheese is 8 litres or 2 gallons of whole milk. You'll need an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture MA4000 series. You'll need a corrected uh, 3 eighths of a teaspoon or 1.8 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll need 3 eighths of a teaspoon or 1.8 millilitres of single strength rennet, which is about between IMCU 200 and 280. That's diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And you'll need about 15 grams or half an ounce of non-iodized cheese salt. Now, that'll depend on the weight of the curd and you'll see that later on in the video. So I'm just stirring in any cream that's floated at the top because I'm using unhomogenized but pasteurized milk. So heat up the milk to 30 degrees Celsius or 87 Fahrenheit. There we go, right on the money. Now you'll notice that the precision cooker is two degrees higher than what the milk is, it seems to uh, be that way the, the milk loses a little bit of heat. Next step is to add your starter culture. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the, the milk. And then cover and allow it to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later Give it a stir and stir in the culture. Then cover that and allow the milk to ripen for 40 minutes. So to stir the cream back in again, just check the temperature. It's spot on, which is great. I haven't had any trouble since using this system. So add in the calcium chloride whilst you're stirring the milk and stir that for about 30 seconds. And then add the rennet solution whilst you're stirring the milk. And then stir it for no more than one minute. So I'm using a flocculation multiplier of 3.5. However, you don't see the flocculation process. So the total curd set time was one hour. 
Now check for a clean break. I think it's a little bit sloppy. I should have waited another 15 minutes. Uh, but the focula, I was going on the flocculation time. Cut the curds into two centimeter or three eighths of an inch cubes. I'm doing that there with my curd knife and my trusty curd harp. And then we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. So after five minutes, we're going to gently stir the curds for 10 minutes, just to make sure that the curds don't turn into slop. So after your 10 minutes of stirring, we're going to begin heating the curds to 36 Celsius or 97 Fahrenheit over the period of 40 minutes. Now during that 40 minutes, we're going to be stirring the whole time to make sure that the curds don't mat together. So there you go, after the 40 minutes, you can see the temperature is up to 36.2, which is close enough. Now I'm just going to test, and I should have known right now that the curds were not strong enough to hold together with this simple squeeze test. It's not, they're not cooked enough. So I should have kept stirring for at least another 20 minutes here. That way, you'll see further on, wouldn't have expelled as much fat as it did during the pressing process. Anyway, so we're going to allow the curds to settle for 10 more minutes, just to make it easy to pour out, and drain the curds through a cheesecloth lined colander and retain the whey. We're going to use the whey to keep the curds warm during this next phase. So I've got a pot under the colander that I've caught all of the way. There we go, you can see that there. So I'm just going to cover that to keep them warm. And upon reading the instructions, I need to break up the curds just to assist in the draining. Just gently with your hand. So we're going to drain for 30 minutes. So we're going to break the curd mass up into thumbnail sized pieces. Should only take about a minute to do this. And then keep the colander over the warm way. This helps with acid development of the cheese. So cover that up and we're going to drain for another three hours and break up the curds every 30 minutes during that three hours. Now instead of maybe the three hours, I think that two hours would probably suffice. I found that the curds were far too dry during this breaking up of the curd period. So you can see there it's starting to dry out. They are knitting together, which is great. Uh, and that's the way it should be because they are retaining a bit of moisture, but... I think that three hours in this recipe is a bit too excessive and that certainly led to the troubles that did it did further on. So after the two or three hours, whatever you decide, then we're going to keep the whey. I'm going to take it over to the stovetop and I'm going to make a ricotta with that because it's very cloudy. Then using another pot, I'm, which is clean, I'm going to transfer the curds into that pot. And keep the cheesecloth for later, for when we press it. So I'm just breaking up the curds for the final time. I found that they were very dry. 
So two hours, probably better than three hours. So we're going to add salt, 1.5% by weight of curds. So for me, it was a kilo of curds, so 15 grams of salt. So that's just any non-iodized salt will do. So just stir that through, mix it through the curds or mill it through the curds. Now we're going to fill up our basket, so just line that with the cheesecloth. And transfer the curds into the cheesecloth lined basket. This process actually reminds me a bit of making Wensleydale. Very similar process of breaking up the curds over a few hours. And if I remember back to the Wensleydale recipe, it was only two hours of actually breaking up the curds. And they're not as dry as what they are with this Sal Giorgi. Anyway, top of the follower and then pop it in the press. And we're going to press it at nine kilograms or 20 pounds for 30 minutes. which is roughly halfway down on my spring press. So after the 30 minutes, you can see the way is not too bad. It's, it's a little bit cloudy, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Anyway, remove the cheese from the basket, turn the cheese and place it back in the basket again. Now be very gentle because you see it hasn't formed together. Certainly not as much as I thought it would because it's very dry. Anyway, fold the cloth over, pop the follower on top and press it again. Now this time at 18 kilograms or 40 pounds for one hour. Fairly firm pressing. So after the hour, we're going to remove it from the basket, turn the cheese and place it back in the basket again. Ready for the next pressing. Now it's starting to form, starting to get a rind. Fold the cloth over, pop the follower on top, and we're going to press it at a max pressure, uh, 22 kilos or 50 pounds for four hours. This is the pressure that my spring is rated for on the cheese press. So after four hours, this is the next day, no, this is four hours, remove the cheese from the basket and turn it and pop it back in the basket again. It was very hard to get it out. Now I've noticed that I've cracked the follower. The amount of pressure I've had to apply. Now the rind is still not fully closed up as you can see they're just picking off a little bit of a bit of dust. Nobody likes dust. Now so just turn the cheese over. It's got one more final pressing and in the instructions it mentioned that we're going to press it very heavily. So I'm going to press it 34 kilos or 75 pounds for two days to get it to consolidate. Now I had to keep coming back and retightening the spring every so often. This is two days later. It's pulling the cheese out, almost impossible to get it out of the basket, but the rind has consolidated but the cheese is very, very dry. So we're going to place it on a draining mat and board for air drying. So this is what it looks like. The rind's fairly consolidated. It certainly has knitted together. It's not going to fall apart. And it's got the little, you can see the holes from the cheese. Now you can see the fat in the bottom of the basket. I certainly have never seen this before. And I've got fat all over the follower and I've cracked the follower. That's how much pressure I had to apply. There's a whole bunch of fat on the bottom of the cheese press. So we're going to continue to air dry that for two to three days or until touch dry. And you can see there after the two days, the cheese started to crack. So instead of naturally aging it, I had to vacuum pack it. Which was disappointing because in the recipe it said I needed to... Uh, air dry it or keep it about uh, 15 degrees or 16 degrees Celsius or room temperature for uh, two weeks. So I just didn't have the chance to do that. So I vacuum packed it instead. 
So we're going to ripen it in the cheese fridge at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for three to six months. So there you have it. That's Sal Georgie. That's how I made it. And uh, you've seen the corrections that I've made as I've gone through and shown you the mistakes that I've made when I made this cheese. So this channel is all about learning. So I'm not shy to show you uh, any mistakes that I make during the cheese making process. Uh, the recipe, and I find, maybe it's because I'm Australian, I don't know what it is. I find the recipes on cheesemaking.com a little bit difficult to follow. Uh, and there's no criticism to Jim, I'm just trying, it takes me a while to understand what he's got written down and try and translate that into actual doing to making the cheese itself. Uh, maybe if I was there with him, it would be a lot easier. So this is my take on Sal Georgie. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's some links in the description below for YouTube memberships and uh, Patreon. And if you want to buy stuff to make Sal Georgie, then you can pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Don't forget to give it a, a like if you enjoyed the video and uh, hit the little subscribe button and the bell to get notified of any more cheesy content. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.